So here's a little demo of this thing in action. So I've got this switch right here, and then I've got my Bifrost monitor. As soon as I flip the switch, I'll get video. And as soon as I flip the switch again, it should switch off. And later on, I'll show you uh, switching between quads and how fast that can happen. So on, off. All right, so this is team racing. I can use this switch on my radio to turn on a drone. Okay, there it is. Now, let's say I cr crash that drone. I could flip the switch again, and now I have another drone ready to go. Okay, and then let's say I have a fourth drone. Flip the switch again, and it flips to the next drone. And now I want to power everything off. I'm set to flip this switch. Everything is off. Everything's on. And switch drones. Pretty cool. All right, let's talk about team racing. I've got that HD0 team race event coming up at the end of August, and I'd love to see you all there. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your video transmitter to work for uh, team racing video switching, um, even if you have the Whoop VTX that doesn't have smart audio. Another cool thing about this event is uh, we're going to make it really fun for everybody. Uh, we're going to have LEDs on the drones, and there's a really simple way that you can add an LED to a drone. It's called the Tiny's LED Satellite. And here I've got it mounted on the back of my drone, rear facing, and it just mounts onto a standoff there. And if I power this up, you can see it's super bright. And that only takes a uh, five volt ground and a digital connection, an LED pad connection to make that work. So I'll put up a video about that if you, if you need it, but it's super easy. I highly recommend uh, picking up a Tiny's LED satellite from uh, Race Day Quads or something like that. So as a reminder, the events in Grand Rapids, uh, August 27th at my flying field and we've got a number of people signed up for it at the moment. Um, currently we're requiring a 3S battery and a minimum weight on the drone and I think what I'm going to do is alter that a little bit. You can run any battery you want but what we'll do is we'll put a throttle cap on your drone uh, to make it fly slower um, more like a 3S uh, battery would fly on a 6S drone just to really slow everything down. So we'll put a throttle cap on. You can run whatever drone you want as long as it's got an HG0 video transmitter on it. So that'll really make it easier for us. We don't have to go out and buy any new batteries or anything. Also, uh, the minimum weight, I, I don't think we need to do that. Uh, we're not going to be super competitive here. So uh, just bring whatever you got. So here's the list of pilots, and I'm really excited for how this race is going to go. So if you haven't signed up already for the race, uh, please do so. You can do it anytime and we'd love to have you there. It really is going to be a fun event. I could be able to try out the new HD0 goggle and get some discounts on any HD0 gear that you need to outfit your drones for this race. So contact Carl for that uh, gear that you need at the discount. See you there. So to make this work, we need to look at the HD0 VTX manual you'll find on the website. Uh, we need to set up Smart Audio, and this says it's not applicable for the Whoop VTX, but uh, hold on, in a later video I'll show you how you can get MSP VTX so that uh, all the Smart Audio functions work even with a Whoop VTX using just MSP. So we'll just continue through this as if uh, we're, we're using smart audio. It's all the same thing So what we need to do is get this VTX table brought into Betaflight um, With MSP VTX actually this is going to be pushed to the flight controller from the VTX so you don't even have to set it up but uh, Let's pull this over. So you're just going to copy this table and then we'll go back to Betaflight CLI and then paste this in and I'm not going to run this command because my VTX already has these settings applied. So we'll switch back now to the manual. Now let's set up the 
VTX power levels on a switch. So go down to page 19 in the manual. And it describes the whole process here better than I could even. But what we're going to grab out of this is the VTX power column right here is important. Um, and then the aux channel column here is important. And it's important to note that it's aux channel minus one. So this example here is going to say that uh, the aux three channel is going to set the uh, VTX power to level one or 25 milliwatt in the lowest position of the switch because switches go from typically 1000 to 2000. The middle position of a three position switch is going to set the VTX to power level two and the highest position on the three position switch will set it to uh, power level three. Now power level three on a um, 200 milliwatt HD zero VTX is actually off. It's zero milliwatt. So that's a key thing to remember. I'm going to take this and I'm going to alter it though for my purpose. So this is the example here and I'm going to change it up for team racing a little bit to be uh, better for what I like to do. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, so I've set, I've decided that aux four you can see it here, aux four, which is three, is going to first, in the default position for aux four, is gonna have the VTX power off. That's what this three means, okay? The other two positions on this three position switch are gonna be 25 milliwatt. So that way I can um, turn the radio on and it will be VTX power off by default. I then have to flip my aux channel four switch and my radio down uh, all the way or part way, it doesn't matter, and the VTX will switch to 25 milliwatt. And then when I want to turn the VTX power off, I put the aux position back to the default position. So take this, uh, you can alter the um, the aux channel for your purpose. Remember, this is aux channel here minus one. So if you want to do um, aux two, then this is going to be one. Okay. So now that we have the VTX switch and power levels uh, defined, let's copy this and put it into CLI and Betaflight. Just paste it in and hit enter and save. So I need to point something out to you. If you're using the ExpressLRS uh, VTX administrator to change channels through Lua um, to this receiver, you might have some issues with the setup I just described. Uh, so here, here's what I'm talking about. Hopefully that's focusing for you. So VTX administrator is the, the thing that I'm telling you to uh, be concerned with. So we'll go in here. And if the in the VTX administrator, the power level is set to anything other than dash, then the ExpressLRS VTX administrator is actually going to push the settings uh, for starting up at power level one to the drone. So we need to make sure that that is set to either be uh, off or you know so which would be power level uh, three I believe or we have to set it to dash to say don't do anything all right so make sure you set that up or this is going to kind of be not doing what you expect all right the other thing is when you have multiple drones powered on at the same time paired to the same receiver you want to go to telemetry ratio on here and you want to set that all the way to off. And the reason that you want to set telemetry ratio to off is because uh, when you have multiple <laughs> drones, 
it, the radio doesn't know what drone uh, to get telemetry from. I think everything gets all screwed up. So multiple drones, you're going to have to turn off telemetry. And um, that's also going to turn off the VTX administrator, by the way. Um, but just just some, some points to, to bring up that I found with using Express LRS. It's a cool system, but uh, there's no bugs like that. It'll really, really ruin your day. All right, so now we have VTX power levels on a switch. And crucially, you can now ensure that when the radio is switch is set to a certain spot, the video will never will not transmit. And even more important, um, it's set up so that it won't transmit when you turn the drone on. Uh, that's key for when we're team racing. You want to be able to plug in your drone and get it ready to go uh, while your teammate is flying, and you don't want to knock your teammate out of the air by transmitting on the same channel while they're flying. So really, if you're, if you're only going to use um, one drone kind of staged and ready to go, that's it. You don't have to do any more setup. Now, we can go further with this. We can set it up so that you can have multiple drones bound to your radio. Uh, and then flip a switch on your radio and have the radio and the video switch to a second or third or fourth drone. So that's what I'm going to go into now. Just know that you don't have to set that up if you're going to be more casual about this. So now I'm going to show you how to set up uh, the ability to switch between drones and we're going to fail safe the inactive drones and activate the active drones. That way you can have multiple drones powered up at the same time that are all bound to your radio. And you can flip a switch and switch between uh, different drones. So first thing we need to do is identify which radio switch we're going to be using for this. Um, I'm going to use this SB switch and in the um, receiver tab you can see that's aux 3. Uh, it's also bound to my beeper right now. Um, also you could bind it to the uh, sixth position switch so the six position switch is right here. But I'm not going to do that today because the six position switch is, is a whole thing that you got to calibrate and configure. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple and stick with a three position switch. Johnny5 has a fantastic video on how to uh, set up the six position switch to work properly for the Radio Master T. 16s and i highly recommend you watch that video if you want to use the six position switch to pick between uh, different drones so we need to go to the modes tab and uh, make sure this hide unused modes toggle is not on because we're going to use a mode that you're probably not used to using which is the fail safe option um, we need to bind that to aux 3 i currently have beeper on aux 3 so I'm going to turn that off and I also have flip over crash on aux 3 so I'm going to have to move that over to a different switch I'll do that later okay so we're going to go to fail safe and then add a range so we're going to call this quad um, drone number one and that means I want it to not be fail safed when in uh, switch position one so to do that, I'm going to make sure that uh, it's like this. So that means, and save that here so it applies. So when the switch is in this down position, uh, 1000, um, it is not fail safe. When I move the switch to position uh, 2, it is fail safe, and position 3 is also fail safe. Okay, so our drone here in this example is uh, drone number 1. Um, if I flip the switch to position two, that would then activate uh, drone number two. And then if I move it to the third position, that would activate drone number three. Okay. Now let's uh, make this a little bit more complicated. Um, let's, let's pretend that we're setting up drone number two rather than drone number one. Now this is the key. We need to do add range. And what we're going to do is say that... Uh, this middle position is not uh, fail-safed. So to do that, 
we need to say aux3 here again, same switch. We're going to move this one to here, okay, and then drag this to here. Now what that just did is some combination logic that says that, uh, you know, when this three position switch is in the middle position, uh, the failsafe is not active. So let's save that. And so if, if uh, this was drone number two and I move the switch to position one, um, the drone is failsafed. When I move it to position two, it is not failsafed and we can fly. And then if I move to position three, um, it is again failsafed. Okay. And just for sake of argument, um, if we were going to set up drone number three in this scheme, um, we're going to move these things around a little bit. So we'll say that's okay. And um, technically we don't need to do the or condition here, but you could do this. So save that. Uh, so this is fail safe, this is fail safe, and this is not fail safe. Okay. But uh, let's get this back in order. So we're setting this up as if it was quad number two. All right. So we're almost done. The last step that we need to set up is in the fail safe tab. What we need to do is set the video transmitter to be set to off when fail safe. Okay. So let's go through that process. And uh, if you don't see the fail safe tab, you need to enable expert mode. That's up here that adds in these additional tabs that we're missing. So now we'll click on failsafe. And what we need to do is remember the switch that we set up for the zero milliwatt option. The zero milliwatt option on my drone is set to uh, switch, switch four, aux four, in the uh, 1000 position, okay? If you had set it up so that uh, it was a different aux, you'd use that. And if you had set it up so that, you know, um, position 2000 is uh, video on, uh, then you, you would do that, or video off. Uh, so on mine, video off is the 1000 position. So we say aux4 set to 1000, and then that will kill the video when the drone is not receiving a signal from the radio. Or we set the radio, um, we, we, we tell the drone to be in fail-safe mode explicitly. It'll switch it off. So congratulations, you made it. It wasn't uh, the most straightforward thing to set up, but it is really, really cool having the ability to change power on a switch and even cooler to be able to set up multiple drones on a line and then flip between them on a radio switch on your radio. So you could you could do practices, let's say, where you just set up three of your drones all plugged in at the same time. You run the first drone until the battery dies, and then you flip it to the second drone, you run that one to the battery dies, and then flip to the third. It's really cool. Uh, give it a shot. It's fun to play with.